Right, here we are with Chris Brown, the general manager of the Elves Club Dubai. Welcome to the magazine, Chris. Good morning. Right, we're here on the uh, fabulous terrace of the new clubhouse at the Elves Club. How pleasing is it finally to be here? Yeah, it's, it's amazing. It's fantastic. We, uh, it's been a long time coming. We've spent a lot of time in preparation for this. Uh, of course, the, uh, the new clubhouse has, has been here for, for four years now. Uh, and finally, in the last two or three months, we've managed to get going with the FF&E and the fit out and, and start operating the building as of last week. Is there like an official opening date for, the, for everybody to come and play? Well, we've, we've gone through a soft launch period this last couple of weeks. Um, ideally, the, op, the official launch will be once the building is complete. Uh, and when I say complete, I mean the second phase is yet to come, which is the Big Easy restaurant, which is Ernie's signature restaurant, the only one outside of South Africa. Uh, the Overlook Lounge, which is above us here, and the Members' Private Lounge. That will take place, the completion date for that is early 2013. So once we have that completed, uh, we'd like to, to launch the club officially with Ernie. Uh, hopefully that would be around about the, the Desert Classic time. Stuff. So are you expecting an immediate footfall um, improvement on the actual golf and the facilities, or, or have you already since it's been here? Yeah, I mean, it's, been, it's difficult to say actually at this stage because we've been closed for two weeks for Overseed. Okay. Uh, we're just about to reopen from Overseed on, on Friday. Um, however, having seen the, the 261 restaurant, which are Spike Bar, uh, it's been extremely popular over this last two weeks, in the evenings particularly. Uh, our focus really is on membership uh, over the next two months and even just with the building announced through the Victory Heights community and through the community at large in this back corridor as we call it with Mora City next door, Green Community next door as well, we've already seen an uptake in memberships already which is great news and it's, it's a great sign for, for things to come. Yeah, that's good stuff. So the feedback so far from members and uh, visitors that have played the course with the clubhouse, what's that been? Yeah, the, the members, we, we've had a few events with the members and they're, they're delighted with what they have. Of course, compared to our old building, uh, which was very limited and basic, albeit it was a $2 million investment and, and a nice temporary uh, facility. Obviously, with having the locker room, uh, we've got 388 lockers in there. Uh, the members have a personalised locker. We have a, uh, a setup with sauna, jacuzzi, steam room. Uh, so of course the facilities that we have now are certainly reflective of the club and the quality we want it to become. Has the uh, transition move been more difficult than you imagined or has it been a smooth process? <laughs> <laughs> I think that's, uh, you know, any kind of, of new building op opening is always going to throw up some challenges. However, we've been in the fortunate position to have had plenty of time to really get our ducks in a row and, and make sure that it was as smooth as possible. And in fairness to the team, you know, they've, they've worked extremely hard in, in planning and preparation prior to the move. And of course, with the support of Sports City, uh, we've managed to get across into the clubhouse fairly seamlessly. So do you think that this new facility will give the Elves Club an advantage over the, the surrounding competition and the, the golf courses in Dubai? I wouldn't say an advantage. I just, you know, we're pleased to be part of of the uh, the, the golf at large in the UAE. You know, we're very fortunate, as you know, we've got some of the best facilities in the world already here. Uh, you look at the, the true connections that we've got: Abu Dhabi Golf Club, we've got Sadiat, we've got the track, Monty, and now ourselves. So, you know, we're looking to really just position ourselves at the top of the tree, and hopefully that does uh, reflect the service, the quality of the golf course, and now the facilities that we have, and puts us. Uh, in competition, uh, finally, with the rest of the UE golf courses. I mean, you touched on a couple of the facilities earlier. I mean, can you just expand on a couple of them that are really special and unique for visitors and members? Yeah, I mean, we've, we've tried to look hard on what we can do differently than, uh, than other clubs, perhaps, around the Middle East, or uh, what we've been doing, certainly, in the last four or five years since we've been operational. So little things like personalisation and the lockers. You know, we've always tried to make sure that when the guest comes to the club, they feel like they're a member for the for the day, which is essentially what Troon try and do worldwide. Uh, with that, we've we've developed a system with the lockers that you do have a locker for the day and a name on the locker, which makes you feel like you are actually a member for the day. So it's little touches like that we've tried to incorporate into our, our day to day operations and uh, best practices that we already have will hopefully ensure that we continue the service levels that we've built a reputation on. Good stuff. So what's your favourite feature so far of the club hats that you've seen? Um, I suppose being Scottish, I've got to say the bar, don't I? <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, I think the 261 restaurant is lovely. It really has 
come out well. Um, we've had a lot of positive feedback about the restaurant uh, and of course now we have the, the back of house facilities to also cater towards providing the five star uh, F&B that we want to, to, to be known for and um, personally probably one of my, my, my own favourites is, is going to be the Pro Shop because I was heavily involved in the design of it and it's come out great, we've really been pleased with the way it's, it's turned out. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's just it's it's hard to really put a finger on one thing, but I'd say the two six one restaurant and the, the pro shop. I mean, final finally with the uh, DP World Tour Championship just around the corner. Are you hoping to capitalise on some of the traffic coming through Dubai? Yeah, I think organically we, we typically do have uh, traffic that come uh, through from Jumeirah Golf Estates because we're right next door. You know, that's that's certainly the the pattern that we've seen historically, but. Um, It'll be nice that the message is out there now, people know the clubhouse is open uh, internationally, certainly with some of the management companies that come through with the players and you know, we have Rory come uh, through the, the, the club on the odd occasion and a few of the other top uh, players in the world. So we're looking forward to seeing these guys here and, and asking for their feedback and their opinion on the facilities that we've got and of course with the course just opening after Overseed, uh, we're looking for their feedback on, on how the course is playing as well. OK, Chris, well, we wish you all the best and good luck with the facility. Thank it's, you. it's absolutely superb, and we're going to see some more pieces of that in the next video. Great. Right, thanks, thanks for your time. Thanks, Paul. Thank you.